Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel, and welcome back to Pathologic Classic HD. No, no. Okay, I can't get through that door. I need to go to the other one. So yeah, I started over. Apparently, I died of some sort of plague. I don't know what the hell happened there in the end of the previous episode. So now I will start over as The Bachelor. The history of humanity witnessed a number of catastrophes that have demonstrated without a shadow of a doubt the pettiness of human achievement and the triumph of the incredible evil. Outbreaks of infectious diseases that have from time to time wiped towns and cities off the map are undoubtedly among those, however smart and and virtuous the people caught up in these destructive events have repeatedly come to the conclusion that it's not you, no use trying to fight these circumstances. The best you can do is bite the bullet and cope with your losses. This is a story of a person who has managed to work miracle and defeat a seemingly unvanquishable foe. Daniel Dankowski, a Bachelor of Medicine, was brought here by circumstances most unfortunate. Dankowski's life work his theory challenging the existing notions of human mortality is being harshly persecuted by the powers that be. Suddenly, a letter arrives from a colleague suggesting that there is previous undiscovered evidence which may support Dankowski's claims. There is a settlement, the letter says, ruled by an extraordinary man who may well be seen as objective proof of Dankowski's daring hypothesis. Grasping at straws of hope, Dankowski decides to follow what he believes to be the sign of divine providence. Without further ado, he sets off for the settlement. Late at night, Bachelor arrives in the town. As he seeks room and board, he gets to know a girl called Eva Yan and stays at her place till dawn. Oh, we have a different cutscene. Ooh. This is very different from the other one. Oh yeah, 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 the other one was where I, I, there was a fight and yeah. I wonder if these two stories, these two player characters are like, I'm guessing it's they're like parallel stories. This is the events unfolding from one perspective and then the yeah like the starting point other one is a welcomed guest the other one is a searched murderer because of a mistake so the and the events that unfold are very different from from that point on because the beginning is a different I'm, I'm, I'm rambling also I wonder because uh, they did mention a bachelor uh, in the in my Haro Specs play through I'm not sure if I got through this that if this person is the one who has been then tasked hey. to find the murderer of Simon whoever the hell that was hi This is weird, but your outfit was actually pretty cool. As of today, my mission remains obscure. The examination of Simon Kine, yeah, who is rumored to be a man of incredible longevity, may shake the very foundation of modern thanatology and the challenge and challenge the existent notions of death itself. However, even if this undying Levi Leviathan proves to be more than a fairy tale, the mere confirmation of his existence won't suffice to prevent the powers that be from shutting our laboratory down. I need to figure out the most fruitful approach. Simon is a well-respected man and if he mistakes my interest for effrontery, it would be nigh impossible to convince him to help me break new ground in the field of human vitality. Today's quests, other tasks, yeah, okay, cool. Day one, by the end of which the bachelor finds himself battling a truly unvanquishable foe. Lovely. Oh! Oh, that's uh, I can I can do some medicine stuff with that. That's like nice. 
really nice. Okay, um, there's my bed. There's a drawer. Okay, this... Uh, how the hell do I get out of here? Through here? No. Oh god. Oh god, I'm stuck in this... Oh wait, there's a door. Jesus. How very claustrophobic. Oh, hi, lady. Let me see my inventory. I have... What is this? Scalpel. Uh-huh. It's in weapons. Protective gloves. Whole bunch of drugs and things. Rations. A water bottle. Other... Kerosene. Yeah, okay. Cool. Hi, I should probably I talk with you. I had a feeling you would come. Mm-hmm. Did the sound from downstairs up outside wake you up too? There was a terrible groan, and then something snapped loudly. Uh, I heard nothing. I fell asleep so quickly I didn't even notice. It's like I fainted. What sound are you talking about? I think there are strangers in the backyard, by the pond. They're unlikely to be planning mischief, but I have a bad feeling about this. I'm afraid to go out to them. I hope they go away soon and stop disturbing our sleep. I'd like to thank you for your hospitality, for board and bed. Uh, why do you think they aren't planning anything foul? Well, I'll just, um, I'll just thank you. I sincerely hope you have everything you need, because I'm very happy to have you here. Daniel, isn't it? Uh, could you please tell me where our ruler, Simon Kain, lives? How do you know who I am? Well, I am probably introduced myself when I came out here. Are you willing to trade the company of a fascinated woman to, for that of a dreadful old man, even if he is a sorcerer? <coughs> That's so sad. But Simon won't go anywhere. He is, he has always been, he will always be, even if the moon were to fall down to the ground. Please stay with me a little longer. Simon is a sorcerer, did I hear you right? Is that secret to his longevity? I couldn't even imagine the hospitality here. But who was waiting for me? I didn't notify old Borak of my arrival. I'm not even sure what made me take off for of this place. Yeah, sure. Glory is the messenger riding ahead of the man, a celebrity from the capital, Bachelor Dunkovsky, the founder of Thanatica, the man who challenged death. Of course we have heard about you. Mm, the glory is undeserved yet, but I hope that getting to know your ruler will give me a chance to live up to the expectations. Death. So that's the enemy you've chosen for yourself. Isn't it hard? I don't think anyone has managed to defeat that evil yet. Millions of doctors defeated it on certain singular occasions, but my enemy is more fearsome. It is death itself rather than singular case of death. My enemy is inevitability. I'm challenging the forces of nature. Yeah. Mm, totally not grandiose or anything. I don't understand. I can barely understand myself. Could death only seem inevitable as to us, but in reality be nothing more than a whim of the will that had shaped this world? That is the question. So where is the key to my victory? Yeah. It's not far. Kind lives at the Crucible on Bridge Square. But could I please offer you a piece of advice? Yeah, sure. Simon has two younger brothers. The eldest of the two, Georgie, is called the judge by the locals. Visit him first. He isn't asleep. He'll teach you how to speak with Simon. The youngest of the three is Victor. Uh, his daughter, Maria, also wanted to see you. It's probably important. Was it she who knew about my arrival before or had? Yes, uh, she told me about it privately. Talking to her is no simple task. Maria is that kind of person. She puts on airs, but that's just how the canes are. It was Maria who told me that she would help you defeat death. That's the precise wording. What a coincidence. All right, thank you for the advice. Go, and I'll prepare everything for your return. Do come back after you speak to the kinds. They will probably do a lot of things that will puzzle you and put you on guard. I will have some advice that may be of help to you if you need it. Okay, I'll come back. Thanks. Um, wait. How did I... Oh! This is a different one. What do I do with this? It's so quiet. Oh right god. Now. Jesus. How do I get away from this 
Okay. I'm having uh, chest pain. That ominous singing outside the window is gnawing at me. Who could be singing at a time like this? Very little time has passed, but I feel hungry and exhausted again. Since you've decided to fight death, you will have to be very careful. It's September. You will be dying with every breath of our air. We are all dying with every second of our lives. It's exactly this annoying phenomenon that I have challenged. But since you've heard of Thanatica's achievement, I'm not going to waste your time monologuing. What does September have to do with it? This step is full of various herbs. They fill the air with dizzying vapors. White whip, twire, and severy. Shwery? Are dangerous in August and September when herbs surrender their juices to the sun. People tend to get headaches this time of year. Heart suffers. Sufferers lie in bed with pains. My heart aches too. How do you people live here? Twire is a rare herb, so usually it's bearable. But this year's unbelievably painful. Plentiful. The elderly say that this is phenomenal. Nothing like this has happened before. They think it's a bad omen. Well, I don't believe that. But the air is droning. Can't you feel it? Don't you feel dizzy? Yeah, the air is heavy. You need to sleep often. Never go hungry. Drink more water. You need to go... Need to look after yourself properly. If you feel sick, forget everything else and get some rest. Otherwise, you may die of a heart attack or bleeding. Be careful, all right. Both my heart and mind are strong enough. Thank you. But how... Where did I... Okay, there. Oh, okay. That was super, super strange. Okay. Let's go outside. Hi! You creepy ass weirdos. Hi. Hold. I'm going to have to teach you about the technicalities of the setting. The time and the place is non-essential, but that's how it is. The actor has to be prepared before he goes on stage, or else he'll fall down the aisle or stumble upon the prompt box. That would look mighty silly, wouldn't you agree? Time flies by. It can't be stopped or turned back. Nights follow days, which are then followed by nights. Things happen without any regard for whether you're there to witness them. Don't expect anyone to wait for you. Most events can be missed. Cool. And so it would make sense for you to visit the places that you care about regularly. You'll find the people that will play major roles in your fate there. They stand out from the common folk. The rest are just crowd shot background. A bunch of extras. As it has always been. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's cruel. Indeed. Still, it's better to avoid hasty judgment. It's a paradox, you see. Don't try to care too much for the lives of these bound to stand out people. And don't be too dismissive of the silent crowd. Both extremes will end in tragedy. Why is that? This world cares for your reputation. A fine and crucial instrument. Your reputation changes the world you see. For it is a mirror, wouldn't you agree? And so a bad reputation can get you into a lot of trouble. For example, blah blah blah. Oh, need I describe? You've got a vivid imagination. Everything changes from mythical aspects to mundane things like people you need treating you badly. How many enemies you've got? How high the prices rise? How bad your dreams are? Lots of things. Uh, sorry, prospect. How do I maintain my reputation? Is that even a question? Same as everywhere. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not betray. Thou sh do not steal. Do not covet. Do not be an asshole. Do not get caught. The rules are the same everywhere. A true selfless deed, like risking something for thy neighbor or even a person who lives quite far away, can help in a dire situation. I see. Good. As for me, I can't see anything in this mask. I have no idea what's going on. Anyway, don't get too worked up about human lives and don't put too much stock in, another, in another's words, mine included. He who trusts everyone is asking to be deceived. Mm-hmm. Yet he who trusts no one is too uh, delusional. Who are you? Venerable bachelor, please be so kind as to linger for a minute. This conversation won't take too much of your time, especially since time stops during dialogues. Oh, cool. At least during the important ones. Hmm. And our dialogue is Im extremely important. You need to know how to play after all, don't you? Yeah, sure. You are a living, breathing man, as is evident from your condition and statuses. You experience hunger, thirst and fatigue. You suffer from pain, wounds and diseases. You are so lifelike. You have to eat, drink, sleep and rest, and to make mistakes. Uh, the latter being the most definitive proof of my human nature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're breaking the fourth wall here. 
If I may, I would like to point out just how important it is to keep an eye on your condition. If you get dizzy or unnaturally sluggish, do have it checked up. Vital procession tends to run faster during emergencies than in everyday life. I know a person who died of stress but was diagnosed with starvation. Yeah, 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 I know that. Uh, need I remind a wise man like you of the fact that hunger is satiated with food? Food can be found in shops, and shops can be found in ordinary houses that are marked with specific signs. Oh, so that's why, because people wouldn't uh, trade with me in my previous try, I I was kind of forced to go go and steal, but I didn't want to do that, I didn't know how to do that, so then I died of hunger. Okay. Sleep, however, is more complicated. People only sleep in beds and only in private residences around here. I'm sorry, but that's just how our world is. Yes, it's unjust. And quite silly, if you forgive me for saying so. Speaking of commerce, different shops sell similar items at different prices. Make sure you don't get cheated. People can be quite brazen around here. You can also barter with the folk out on the street. Some things may be nothing more than trinkets to you, but others would be willing to part with their lives' blood for them. Blood? Yes, blood. It's not my place to lecture you, but if, following your Hippocratic oath, you ever consider easing someone's pain, feel free to just approach them with a suitable drug. You will see their pain r r residing before your very eyes. The sick fall asleep when they're close to recovery, don't they? Or when they're close to their ultimate rest. Still, helping the hopeless will grant you good reputation. You will be seen as benefactor, willing to part with a precious sleeping draught or a painkiller for a simple bystander. Mm -hmm. Anything else? No, not yet. Okay, bye then. Cool. Lovely. Okay. Let's start with the water bottle. Empty bottle is required. I don't have a bottle. Jesus Christ. How the hell is that? Okay, there. There's a bottle. Cool. Oh, and I have a lot of a lot more money than than my previous character. Okay, so here I'm very healthy. My reputation is on point. I'm not hungry or is exhausted or anything. Okay, cool. This is going to be so much easier like this. Wait, where am I going? This is where I slept. Mansion called Stillwater. Mm -hmm. Here is Simon and mysterious Maria. So let's go this way. There's so many more people. I I didn't get to here at all. This is apparently a place for fancier folk, if you wish. Hello! Anybody here? Mind if I take your sword? Mind if I take your food? Why is every mirror broken? That's weird. Hi! Uh, why can't I move on my own? You resemble an adventurer rather than a doctor. Well, I am an adventurer. I saw you in a dream. Don't flatter yourself. My desires have nothing to do with that. I simply saw you take us all by the throat. What else did you see? I'll tell you when I think I can trust you. Okay, I hope that happens soon. Sabarov's wait is over. They've always wanted an heir. Okay. S people, the way they speak is so strange. It's like they're all high on something. I have a lot to tell you, Bachelor Dovinsky. Dankonsky, sorry. But I dare not until you meet my uncle Georgie. Otherwise, he'll rip my tongue out of disclosing a secret. Some strict morals your family has. They uh, make much more sense than you may think. This is not a game, is it? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, if you know what I mean. For all that is holy, do speak to my uncle, and then come back to me. Otherwise, the excruciating anticipation will tear my heart to pieces. 
Okay, where is your uncle now? Close at hand, just next door. Go to the wing that is closer to the river. Its roof is shaped like a crown. Okay, I'll be back soon, thank you. Do we have a... Georgie here? Bong. You have some... Strange art in your house. Hi! Are you Simon? Yes. No, no, you're Victor. The famous Dr. Dunkowski, your arrival is a great honor to us. Victor Kane at your service. Daniel, I foresee that the things that have become ordinary for us will probably make you feel uncomfortable and disturbed. I would like to compensate for that impression. You know, our small community has fallen out of the loop. Time leaves us behind. What do you mean? I mean the traditions, games that we play with passion will most likely be of no interest to you. The people you meet here may seem eccentric, naive or even somewhat deranged. Please take it easy on us and don't judge us too strictly. I will do my best not to disappoint you. I hope there will be will be able to blah blah blah. Perhaps Olgimsky is setting George is waiting for you, my friend. He has news for you that you will find surprising. I only ask one thing, don't be too quick to reject his request. Uh I don't understand. He will explain it better than himself. We put too many hopes in your arrivals. The echo of these hopes has led him to offer you a rather intricate conundrum to solve. You're scaring me. Okay, so you were not Georgie. Where is Georgie then? Is he in here? No. Hi there. Are you Georgie? You don't look like a Georgie. I don't know. I'm Hi. Too old. Oh yeah, Nothing you are. Can harm me anymore. Most venerable doctor, it is with great impatience that I have been expecting you. You need not dwell into the minutiae of your business with us since our family is well acquainted with your scholarly work. We are also quite aware of the difficulties you were experiencing and well prepared to do our utmost to support you. It hurts me all the more to be the one to inform you that Simon, or Simon, my genius brother, the creator, keeper and embodiment of all that surrounds us, has been murdered. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, these are like two sides of the same story. <sighs> Damn it. Who did it? That is what we want you to find out, with your help, Bachelor Dankowski. What do you know? My brother was murdered last night under the strangest of circumstances, but for all the mystery surrounding his death, I'd rather eschew the notion that his departure was connected with whomever had visited Simon that evening. A visitor is a man of laudable rectitude and an old friend of our family. There are witnesses to testify that he and Simon did not nothing but converse. Okay, who was the visitor? Someone you know quite well. The man whom my brother saw last night was your colleague, Isidor Burak. He was not the very person to advise you to come here as well. Was him? Yeah. Yes. Isidor has done more than he thinks. I have lingering feeling that time itself is using uncontestable powers to further its own intentions. What do you think? Categories like time, nature, and fate deprive man of responsibility for what goes on around him. I was thought to avoid this without you. Yeah. It could be that my mind is clouded by sorrow, but I cannot escape the feeling that your arrival was no coincidence. Your choice was made for you, my dear doctor. Let us not blame fate for it. Uh, Isidore wrote to you without making us aware. He took risk that could have displeased our family. Really? Even though we were uncertain of when you would arrive, my brother was looking forward to meeting you. The tragedy may have been a coincidence consequence of the actions he took in preparation for your arrival. Someone has taken a powerful piece from the chessboard, piece upon which your position here depended. It is doubly regrettable that Simon was playing on your side. So you presume the queen knew of the blow and sacrificed itself for a pawn, but why? Uh, I sincerely... To grant you victory over death, was it not your ultimate aspiration? To help your Simon seems to have played a very dangerous game with fate itself. He went out of his way to provide you with a body of evidence. Uh, what did he do? 
It is of no importance to me what exactly he did. He took another leap from the stars and paid a terrible price for it. I repeat, he was murdered. The subject of importance here is the identity of the murderer. Everything has gone to rack and ruin. I wish I could take vengeance upon the person who ripped the life from this man. Do you want to help us, doctor? Find the murderer for us. My brother Victor, who is in the wing next door, would share some of his thoughts on the matter. Help us and the reward will not disappoint you. Indeed, seems there are way too many consequences. Con cons con coincidences? Coincidences? Coincidences, yes. Your brother's murder can just well be called a murder of Bachelor Dankomsky. Dankomsky. I will help you in every way I can. I need some time to get my act together. I suspect you are not aware that these developments render my whole life work null and void. No. I'm convinced that if there is any one at all that can help us solve this puzzle, then it's you. The mission calls for someone as astute and inventive as yourself. If Isidore was an instrument of fate, then Simon's murder is a message that fate intended for you personally. Uh, do not think I am inclined to blame you for that. I am not. That would have been strange to say at least. How do you plan to look for the murderer? We will take our own measures. The only thing I expect from you is to be yourself. Do only what you think is required. Whatever you find out, whatever you do, whatever your day turns into, everything is a clue to the solution of this puzzle. I repeat, everything that is happening here is happening on your account. You have my sympathy. Okay, cool. So now I need to get back to Simon. No, not Simon. Victor. I should probably visit Maria first. She asked me to go to her quickly. There's more life in me that can be lived. <laughs> yeah, you sound really lifelike. <sighs> now listen closely. For the time for collusion, secrets and alliances has come. I'm going to ask something for, of you. I'm not used to that. I'm used to holding the reins, but you are not harnessed, so it would be unacceptable to address you in this manner. I find solace in the fact that my request will... Be welcome with you. It fits the style of your venture. I'm not an adventurer and my job is no venture. I hope it never becomes one. Well, I actually think I said that I was an adventurer. Yes, you'd better be polite. I don't take kindly to orders. I am a creature of liberty. Mm. I apologize if my words come across as mangled and silly. I'm truly not used to asking. But the, na but the nature of my request demands complete and selfless humility. Just imagine me begging and kneeling. And believe me, I do feel that way. <sighs> I'd kneel myself before a charming lady. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, no need to kneel. What do you want to talk about? Today's death was the first, but it won't be the last. Simon has opened the score of irreplaceable victims. Soon the numbers will multiply. I beg you to preserve the lives of several people when the lines of their fortune crosses yours. Before any of them dies, there will be a moment when you will be able to intervene. I know that for a fact. Okay, who are these people? Doesn't matter. What was destined to happen will happen. You can whatever be whatever you want to be. But not a coward choosing to hear no evil and run away from reality. I will give you a list of those I know of. The people are bound to you. What in the world is going on here? Are trying to flirt with me? That is not a very flirty face. There is a tight spring of power within each of these people. Each of them can break the routine of human existence and become something greater. They are standing on the verge of their humanity, gazing into the realm where they could serve a different, higher purpose without even knowing it. Moreover, they are bound to make the leap in one way or another. That's why we call them simply the Bound. How is their faint bound to mind? Did you say my victory depended on Demba? When and how are these people supposed to die? Bound to die, no need to shy away from it. That is also implied. You didn't answer my question. How and when? I don't know. I'm not a mistress yet. The future is not as clear to me as I would prefer, but I can feel the present. I can already distinguish a dubious guess from a pulse of a precise knowledge divide, devoid of words and images. And images. <clears throat> These people are bound to you. Your lives are connected. I wouldn't have asked you to take care of them otherwise. Are you clairvoyant or something? Ah, yes. You haven't been told, have you? 
It didn't even cross my mind that someone may be unaware of my abilities. No one here dares doubt them, for they are evident. Yes, the mistress of every ruling house possesses special abilities. I am learning to see the future and transform the present. This fact offers your words a different degree of authenticity. Will you comply with my request? Will you save the lives of people I named to you? Answer me before going back to Eva. If it's truly within my power, I'll do my best. How do you know that Eva asked you to come back? No, Maria, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's within my power. Okay. Georgie Kane, Victor Kane, Andre Stamatin, Peter Stamatin, Maria Kaina, Eva Jan, Mark Immortel. Okay. Lovely. So in the previous one, I had the bound that I was supposed to protect where all... Um, oh, hi, you're here now. Do I need to talk to you again? Uh, like beggar children. Now these people look more high profile. The town is small and rather unexceptional, isn't it? But there are all kinds of people in here, the simple folk and the more remarkable ones. The former will tell you more than they know. The latter know way more than they're ever going to let out. Keep a close eye on them. Your victory depends on it. Uh-huh. Who are these remarkable people? There are twenty-something of them, easily distinguished by their lodging and presence. They are called by many names. The Bound, the Faded, blah blah blah. Instead of say no, there used to be a pagan called Taglur. Uh, the Radley sort a Taglur means a kind of circle. Gobo is a character from a local epic and so What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Simon ch chose them. Why? Because it is they that will decide the fate of this town. Don't be distracted by the fact that some of them looks Look insignificant or disreputable. They will earn their worth. Just give them time. They're the most important joints of this town. Uh huh. Each day, one of them will try death by the tooth. Each will put their life at risk, and each one that dies is important. Some of them may take the keys to victory to the grave. Mind that the keys are yours while the grave is theirs. Others will do the opposite. Don't waste your chance to condemn someone who may get in your way. How do I know what is helpful and what gets in the way? Okay, dropping you more hints th would be cheating. Shutting up now. Allow me to conclude. Each bound you save will influence the final of your adventure. Each of them has their own goals and motives. It may so happen that those who seek a different endings survive and then, well, you've been warned. Okay. So wait, is that what happened in the previous one? Did one of my... My bound people die and then the game just ended. What? I don't know what happened there. I really don't. Okay, I will take that into account and will be careful. And what do you have to say then? Something in particular we, we feel the urge to warn you about. When you speak to the bound, please choose your words carefully. Do not worry, you will easily be able to make out what kind of person is standing before you, an observant mind that you are. So use that skill when dealing with the bound. Some of them are indeed worth insulting, whereas others need to be treated with utmost respect. I have no idea what you're talking about. Every line you utter will have consequences. News spread rapidly around here. If you spoil your reputation in one place, you'll have to reap what you have sown in another. Restore your good name in the south, and you'll receive warmer welcome in the north. They will heed every word you say, and you will be rewarded. Okay, cool. So... Oh yeah, then I need to get back to... back to Ava. And I also want to explore this fancier side of town a little bit, because I didn't have... A have really a chance to do that earlier. Hi. Hello. Why are you staring at me like that? Oh, I can't go go that way. Well. Fine, we'll go around here then. I I get it why they recommend that the first time playthrough is with the bachelor. You start with your 
um, stats like in the most optimal position. You know, not hungry or or tired or or anything like that. Where am I? I can't. Oh, oh, I'm right there. Oh, I went past the place. No, oh, it's, it's that. That is the place I need to go, I think. Do you have a gate here? No. Um, yeah. Like, the character status is a lot better than <laughs> than with the Haro specs. And also the people are being nicer, I have a lot more money, and yeah. They also tell you a lot more things, like there's more instructions and hand-holding, at least here in the beginning. Okay, Eva, hi! I had a feeling you would come. <laughs> yes. That ominous singing outside the window is gnawing at me. What would be... Um, I can't hear anything. Oh. Uh, <sighs> what is there to talk about? Did you know that Simon was murdered? Yeah, they're talking about this on every corner already. It boggles my mind. It's terrible, isn't it? Georgie bid me to find the murderer. He lauded my analytic abilities. Did you agree? Yes, um, all my hopes went down with Chute in a single moment. Oh, the villainy. Are you going to go back to the capital? Going to stay here for a while? Georgie was wound has wounded my pride. I gave him hope. He expects me to find the killer. There's only disgrace for me in the capital. If they shut down the laboratory, I will most likely have blown my brains out. Yeah, there's... Stay, you can leave at my place. The Stamatin brothers came from capital in their day too. They are geniuses just like you, but they've been living here for ten years now, having no plans to leave. Do you have any theories? Who could have killed an immortal man? Oh, our masks staged a mime performance about this not so long ago. The grim murder, murder of the sorcerer King Kuron. Mark promised that they'd make a puppet show interpretation of the same play today. Now they will surely cancel the performance and the puppet show, though. Who is Mark? Oh, Mark is a wonderful puppet master. He can do anything. He can perform all sorts of tricks. He can swallow swords and read the future in the cards. And he also directs the mime performances. What is that? Two ritual masks pick a volunteer from the crowd. Mark look at, looks at his hands, then shows them to the mask. They improvise. Without a word, they play out either the nearest future or the whole life of the person, depending on the price. And it always comes true. Can you imagine? Where is this theater? On a spin a yarn square in the marrow, the very essence and heart of the town, the central district. But the theater is closed now, it will only open in the evening. And even then, I don't know, after everything that transpired today, I'm afraid they might accuse poor Mark. I'll check on him, we'll figure this artist out. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll figure this out. Mark, who is Mark? Oh yeah, I needed to see Victor again. God damn, lots of going back and forth. But fine, I'll go see Victor. Yeah, there we go. Bye. I I don't <laughs> have the <laughs> blood and kidneys that that I had with the previous character. I it's a shame that I didn't get to sell those. Georgie has told me everything, which is to say he has told me very little, but it was enough to astound me. He maintains that you can provide more detailed account. So you have agreed to help us? Yes, I have. May I ask why? The killer's goals seem to align astonishingly well with the goals of those who have been waging war against my work for years. We share a tragedy. I want to exact vengeance upon the one that robbed me and my work a future. I want to solve a puzzle. I even like having so little information. It's challenges to my... Yeah, seem to align. I'm prepared to answer any question you may have. When was Simon last seen? 
He sent Isidore home. Then, an hour later, he came to this hall to see us. He announced his plans to withdraw to the focus and receive no one. He told us not to approach the focus and to fast for a week, partaking of neither meat nor water. Then, in the morning, he was found dead. How was he found? Servants discovered him this morning. The room had been ransacked. Everything was that was breakable had been broken. His disfigured, contorted body bore signs of terrible suffering. His neck was twisted, his spine broken, I think. No one has touched the body. It is currently inside the focus and will remain there for a prescribed amount of time. Respect anyone? All I know is that Isidore was with him that evening. No one can enter focus, ag- focus against Simon's will. Well, perhaps a higher being could, but no one else. Could a murderer have already been waiting for Simon? No, you have no concept of what the focus is. Entering it is like entering someone else's mind, or a drawn picture, if you will. It is impossible. What is the focus? It's hard to explain. It's his study, if you will. An extraordinarily spacious creative laboratory, almost perfectly sealed off, except for the door that was visible at all times, metaphorically speaking. I don't understand. It's like an equation, or a mirror puzzle. Anyway, the murderer could not have been hiding there, take my word for it. Well, Simon did get in here somewhere. He could perform far more impressive tasks. There's a reason why the whole town reversed, I mean, revered him. Tell me honestly, dear Victor, did Simon exist at all? Yeah. Bravo, doctor. There is an indeed spark of genius to you. Alas, yes, he did. Alas? It's not that I would benefit from his death. Alas, for that would be too simple an explanation. Simon well and truly did exist. That is exactly what's left everyone in disarray. It was so hard for them to accept his existence that he, the thought of his demise is now driving them mad. Fair enough. What do you want from me, then? Just take a look around. Trust your intuition. Do whatever you like. Speak to whomever you feel you need to. Look for the murderer, a doctor, and you will find them. Keep looking till the last breath. I'm sure your rational thinking will help you. So, Isidore is the only lead. How can I find him? I'll show you, but you must be careful. Simon's murderer, whoever they are, could not be an ordinary person. I can't imagine them even being... A person. I fear it could only be fate wearing the guise of a mysterious monster. Yeah, I will be careful. This is where Isidore Burak lives. Mm. Okay. Today's quest. To find out who killed immortal Simon Kine, the dead man's own family may not want it more than I do. I've been abiding desire to punish the murderer to eradicate them, no matter if they were acting on their own account or at the behest of the powers that be. Whoever they were, they picked the moment far too well. My gentle associate, myself as wiser, Isidore Burak, was the last person to see Simon Kine alive. If it wasn't for Burak's guidance, I never would have come to this backwoods domain. All the more reason to start my pursuit with them. Or him. Other tasks. Okay, no other tasks at hand. Can I go through this door? No, I can't. It's just there to annoy me. Okay, that's that's lovely. It's that door there, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Okay, easy door. Where do you live? I need to go around this thing and then up north and cross the reverse. Okay. What is that place? I kind of want to go into that place. Is that the focus? The polyhedron. Uh Uh-huh. Can I go in there? I... I'm... distracting myself. I probably shouldn't be here. Let's get back. This will come into play at some point, but now I'm just gonna... go through the town to Isidore's place and then leave this episode of Pathologic there. I wonder if I suffer fall damage. I probably do. I shouldn't shouldn't fall. Yeah. 
That looks like a butcher shop. Are you a butcher shop? Will you sell me something to eat? I don't want to die of hunger like I did the last time. Okay. A lemon. Highly valuable fruit. Provides a rich supply of vitamins and reduces fatigue, but increases hunger. <laughs> increases immunity by a negligible amount. Lemons are considered rare. Okay, then we have cracker. Hasn't been any... Not very nutritious. Can be stored for a long time. Okay, cool. Dried fish. Um... This has made people wary of eating f fresh fish and they now preserve... Okay, yeah, sure, let's buy fish and let's buy some meat. Piece of stale bread. No. An egg. Very nutritious, especially good for organisms weakened by serious illness. And dried meat. Yeah, sure. Okay. Now I have things that I can survive with. Ooh. What are you? A needle. Cool. And then where am I going? Where am I? Okay, I can just go through. Through here. Okay, yeah, we get no wait 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 is it there? Behind these, yeah, 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 this way. This way, okay. Now I'm Yeah, approaching the right place. Okay, cool. And I will leave this episode of Pathologic right here. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked it, let me know. I hope you're all having a great day. And I will see you again next time. Also, how the hell do I get into that house? I can't see any doors.